Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm a non one photo raw 2021 and I'm enhancing a sunset basically. It was frankly beautiful light. This was in Victoria, Canada. Here's the uh, photo itself. And I really like this scene overall, but I wanted to make the photo just kind of come to life. It was a little bit too blown out in certain areas. It didn't have the right stuff in other areas. So I kind of worked through that. The first thing I did before starting my edit though is kind of get my canvas in place. So that involved lens correction and transform. Lens correction is great in On One. I love that. It picked up that this was shot with my 16 to 35 millimeter Sony. And so um, I just went in and did some additional distortion. And then I also went into transform to kind of straighten the photo up. So you can see if I turn these two off, what the photo looked like before I got started. You can see in the bottom right corner down here, there are some people watching this musician, but I couldn't really get the full scene. I, I couldn't get any wider, I guess. I, it was at, probably at 16. So um, I used lens correction which adjusted the distortion, got rid of them because I didn't like that little bit of a person hanging out in the corner. And then I used transform to kind of straighten it up. And now I feel like I have my canvas perfectly straight, ready to go. And that's when I start editing. So that starts me off here in the, um, in the develop uh, tone and color section. So I'm gonna come and I'm actually gonna reduce exposure because it is a little bit bright overall. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast here. Highlights are coming down a fair amount. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's just a little too bright there in some of those areas. Midtones are going up a little as well, and uh, shadows are to go with it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more in the shadows. So you know, so far we're we're balancing the light, which is really that's how I start my edits. I just come over here and I kind of do these kind of things in order to just kind of get the base image looking the way I want it to look. Now I'm going to drag the temperature to the right. I want to warm this up a little bit and I'm going to give it a little bit more of that tint. I love to do that on sunsets, give it some of that magenta cat. It's just something I like. Certainly uh, just a personal preference. There's no reason that you would want to do that unless you just like it as well. But something about that magenta look in a sunset, just it just hits me in the right spot, my friends. So uh, a little bit of vibrance as well. And you know what, so far, honestly, like I was there and I was like, that looks pretty good. I mean, it's uh, it's nice looking compared to how it was. Again, started with some pretty beautiful light. Uh, you know, this the scene is not so bad either, but I think the adjustments with lens correction and transform help to kind of frame the canvas better and then I did these other moves here to kind of get it uh, where it is. But of course, me being me, I am not done yet. So I'm gonna pop over here, start on a local adjustment. I'm gonna invert that so I can see it. And the exposure is actually, I just hit reset. I'm gonna drop that about a 0.2. I'm gonna add contrast of about a 30 or so, 31 right up in there. I'm gonna take whites down a bit, uh, like a negative 25, 26, 27, something like that. And structure is going negative as well. And so when you see me do that, you probably know that I'm going into the sky with this adjustment, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna cool it off. Um, I'm gonna go negative 11 in the temperature here for the sky. But again, uh, with the tint that I mentioned, I just like that so much. I'm gonna add that as a positive two. So that's pretty much a sky adjustment. And what I want to do is drop this in with a gradient mask. And this is gonna be what they call linear bottom, which means it applies to the top. I know, sort of confusing sounding, but um, that's what it is. So if I show you the mask, I just quickly just made these edits here in this local adjustment with the gradient mask, just stuck them in the sky pretty much. And I think that looks good. Now I might move that up a tiny bit, maybe something like that, maybe collapse that uh, just a little bit as well. Something about like that. So if I look at my mask again, there you go. I just shrunk the gradient zone, lifted it a little bit higher in the photo, but this local adjustment basically helped me control that sky. It was a little bit blown out. So if I turn this off, there it is, a little bit too bright, lacking uh, punch, even though it's really beautiful and the colors were fantastic. But now I think it's better looking and better uh, to my liking, really. And that's how I edit. I, I like, if I like something, then it's a good edit, right? And if I don't like it, it's not a good edit. Hopefully you're the same way because we should be making ourselves happy in our edits. While I'm here, I'm gonna do another local adjustment. This one will be for the bottom. So once again, I'm gonna invert this so I can see it. And I'm gonna hit reset on exposure because I don't wanna darken the foreground. It's dark enough. I am gonna add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna bump up the shadows a tiny bit. Here I'm gonna add structure of about a 20, 22, 23, something like that. Just kind of creating a little bit of crunch there. Temperature is gonna go slightly negative, just a very slight amount, like a negative two. And again, tint, you know, a positive four. And again, that is um, for me just trying to match what the uh, what I did in the sky, right? And so uh, saturation is zero, but uh, vibrance is gonna be about a four. So very slight adjustment, but once again, I'm gonna use this linear bottom. Nope, sorry, uh -huh. 
make that linear top. See what I mean? It's confusing. I think it's bottom, like I'm gonna mask in the bottom, but I'm masking out the bottom if it's linear bottom. So I'm linear top, something about like that. Maybe tilt that a little bit, maybe pull it down here. And mostly what I'm doing here, as you can see, is where it's white, white reveals, black conceals. So these edits are not going in the black area, they are going in the white area. And then this is the gradient zone where it kind of blends together. I call it the gradient zone. I don't know what it's called, but it's a zone where the gradient is applied. So gradient zone to me, but there it is. Uh, let me turn this off. There it is before, and with this adjustment, there it is now. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna pop over to effects. I'm gonna get one of my favorite tools here, which is Tone Enhancer. It's really just a fantastic tool. I'm actually gonna go negative on the exposure overall. This is gonna be a global adjustment. Uh, but but very slightly negative. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast as well. Highlights are gonna come down just a smidge, you know, like 10 or 12, 15, something like that. And shadows are gonna go up just a little bit as well. So this is a global adjustment. Again, it's just kind of balancing the light. Even though I always do contrast and highlights and shadows and stuff on the develop tab, I frequently, on just about every photo, will use something like Tone Enhancer. Regardless of which app I'm in, I will often come back and do some kind of adjustment that's global that affects everything. And I could theoretically, I guess, go back to develop and swizzle those a little bit to get it just right, but I just kind of prefer to do it separately. It's just kind of a personal preference, but it's pretty subtle overall. There it is before, and there it is with that adjustment. And in fact, now that I'm looking at it, I do this a lot. I might actually lift the shadows a little bit more and maybe not drop the exposure as much. I might pull that back just a tiny bit. So again, it's a very subtle light adjustment. You may not even be able to see it that well. There it is before, and there it is now. In fact, it's it's almost hard for me to see it, and I'm sitting here looking at it close. So um, anyway, that is that. And next up, I've got Dynamic Contrast, another one of my favorite tools. It's really good at just popping that detail. And so it defaults to medium and large, having a 15 and 20. I'm gonna leave it there, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of vibrance of about a 25. And I actually might add a little bit of small. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on masking. I'm gonna go get the perfect brush. And this one is just so good. I love it. I need to be in paint in though. Paint in. I wanna paint that in and I just wanna take this small adjustment that I made here and paint it into this area. Oops, you know what? I gotta invert the mask. Gosh, I, you gotta pay attention to these things because it was all white when I was trying to paint it in. It wasn't uh, allowing me to paint it in because it was already applied because it was white. So black mask and then paint in, that works really well. So now I can come in and paint in this adjustment. And if you see in that masking window up here, you can see some of it is starting to turn white. And that is because I am painting in on top of a black mask. Hope that makes sense. Just pay attention to your settings uh, because you know if you're just kind of in a hurry, maybe you're recording a video uh, or something like that, you sometimes overlook some of the really basic fundamental details that are super important to get right, but you'll eventually figure it out because something won't work. Okay, so there it is with the dynamic contrast. Let me show you the view. You can see how that perfect brush just comes in and it just does such a good job. I mean, I just love how that looks. You can always tighten that up, add a little bit more if you want to or if you feel like you need to. I think that's fine. I'll turn off the view mode and let me turn off this tool or this filter. I don't know how much you can see, but I basically just added a little bit of crunch to that foreground. And uh, when I turn it back on, you can see that it's a little bit crunchier. And it gets, it gets slightly brighter. And in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and copy this mask and I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Tone Enhancer and I'm gonna paste this mask. So paste, and I'm making this up on the fly, but I think I want that foreground to be a little bit brighter. Click the wrong button there. Let me close the masking tool. I'm just gonna lift the exposure a little bit, and you can see I've already, is if, you know, I don't wanna go too high, but you can see how I've isolated that section with the perfect brush, and now I can come in and just lift that exposure a little bit, which I actually think looks a little bit better. So I'm making it up on the fly, my friends, but I do that often when I'm editing in these videos. I'll just decide at the moment there that something needs to change. In this case, I wanted to brighten that up a little bit. There it is before, and there it is after. Maybe that's a little bit too much. I don't wanna overdo it, but I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. I think that 35 looks good. There it is a bit darker, and now it's got a little bit better visibility into that foreground. I'm happy with that. If I wanted to, I could now, and this is a great thing about Tone Enhancer, I've got clarity. I could come in here and add a little bit of clarity, which is a little bit more pop. It gives you that edge contrast and detail if I really wanted to crunch it up. 
Maybe I'll do a little bit of that. So that creates that kind of hard foreground element and then the rest of it's a little bit softer as I move from, you know, into the color reflected in the sky, or excuse me, reflected in the harbor and then into the sky. So that's really it. I'm gonna hit Z to hide my masking brush and let me hit before and after or uh, hit the preview. That's how it was. Wide angle, so tilted a little bit back. Caught those people in that bottom right corner. Didn't like that. Sky's a little bit blown out, but with a raw file, especially, you have so much power to pull this back. And I think those highlights are well under control. I think the sky looks fantastic. I love the color. Having redone things with transform and the lens correction tools allowed me to flatten out the photo because you get a little bit of distortion with those wide angles. Also got rid of those people in that bottom corner, which I think were just distracting. And I think overall the photo is much improved. So if I do a sliding comparison here, you know, in addition to the uh, the adjustments that you can see with lens correction and transform, you can just see how the, the sky and the light, especially over here, it's so much uh, better under control. The foreground's got better visibility. The reflections and the ripples there look great. And the colors I think are just popping. I love it. That's how I enhance this sunset, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. So many tools, so much fun you can have in on one, lots of different ways to skin the cat, so to speak. I'll be back soon with more videos. If there's something specific you want me to talk about, hit me up down below. I'll do what I can to accommodate you. And thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well. Stay uh, staying safe. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Take care and adios.